Uh, Peter, VK7, LCW. Uh, thank you for joining us. Please make your call, VK5, my Julius. A quick video on a super simple 40 meter receiver. More stable than a regenerative set, but simpler than most direct conversion receivers. Okay, that last station again. Good evening, Greg. Uh, not a bad signal for you tonight, mate. Please make your call, VK5, my Julius. There's just three stages. An MPF 102 FET is an amplified detector. The BC548 is a local oscillator using a ceramic resonator on 7 MHz and the standard LM386 circuit is the audio amplifier. It's not a regenerative receiver so there's no touchy regeneration control and tuning is a lot easier because instead of covering a 5 or 10 MHz segment of the HF spectrum you're only covering maybe 100 kHz or so because of the ceramic resonator. Without a reduction drive, that makes tuning a lot easier, and the ceramic resonator also improves frequency stability. So what I'll do, I'll describe the circuit and then give you a demonstration of what this receiver can do. Not my best performing receiver, but it does pick up signals well, including DX. It only uses 20 parts, almost all of them commonly available. To the right is the roller drum attached to the tuning gabaster. I haven't put on a scale yet, although I have put insulation tape over the dial markings. You'll recognise this dial drum as something salvaged from a clock radio. This is the local oscillator part using a ceramic resonator just here, that blue thing, for 7.16 MHz. It's a three-legged type available from VK5 EME mini kits. The transistor you see I'm pointing to is an MPF102. That's the detector. And just here is the RF choke 4.7 microhenry in parallel with 100 picofarad. Um, the capacitor here is a capacitor that is between the antenna socket and the three turn winding over the RF choke. The purpose of the 100 picofarad series capacitor is to provide a bit of loss on the AM broadcast band that helps prevent station breakthrough from any strong signals. The RF coming in from the antenna is coupled to the detector via a three-turn winding over the 4.7 microhenry. The black wire you see here, that's the coupling from the local oscillator. It connects to the emitter of that local oscillator. And that is brought somewhere near the gate of the MPF-102 in the detector. It's not electrically connected, it's just light coupling and you can change the coupling. For strong signals you might need to have tighter coupling so that more of the local oscillator signal gets through. For weaker signals you might want to move it a little bit away to loosen the coupling. And finally, on the board that's mounted at right angles to the main board, is the LM386 audio amplifier. Just the conventional circuit with a capacitor across pins 1 and 8 for more gain. By itself this will power a speaker. If you wanted even more gain then you could try the unleashed LM386 circuit but I haven't found it necessary for this receiver. Well, here's the circuit. Closer up, we've got the local oscillator. Uses a 7.16 megahertz ceramic resonator. This is a little bit different from the ones I normally use. It's got three legs, and it came from VK5 EME's mini kits. You could use a two-legged version 
but then you don't need to use the earth connection here. This is a variable capacitor, a maximum capacitance of around 200 picofarad. You can use a plastic type salvaged from an AM broadcast radio for it. Um, just in case you can't read the component values, that's 100k. Both these capacitors here are 22 picofarad. Those values are less than normal. I think it's because the ceramic resonator here has some inbuilt capacitors. 1k resistor from emitter to earth. 100 nanofarad, not critical. And 390 ohm. Now, this capacitor here isn't really a capacitor. It's actually formed by a bit of wire extending from the emitter here just put near this part of the circuit. That brings us to the following stage. This is where the incoming signals from the antenna go via 100 picofarad capacitor. Three turns of wire. That is over a 4.7 microhenry RF choke. That's in parallel with 100 picofarads. 4.7 microhenry and 100 picofarad resonate at about 7.1 megahertz. So that makes a fine tuned circuit without a need to wind any coils, except for the three turns which comes from the antenna via a 100 picofarad capacitor, three turns of wire over the RF choke. You can use very fine wire like salvaged from a transformer. The other end goes to earth and that provides a primary winding for coupling. Why 100 picofarad here? Well, I wanted a value that didn't offer too much attenuation at 7 MHz, but offered attenuation on the AM broadcast band where there's some strong signals. Um, if we didn't have that, then they would overload the receiver. Uh, this is an MPF-102 grid drain source, 100K um, going to earth in parallel with 1 nanofarad. 4.7k, 100 nanofarad, not critical. This top rail is the 12 volt supply. Getting back to the audio output, 10 microfarad there. Uh, an electrolytic capacitor is okay. I haven't shown the polarity, but I think the positive is on the left. 10 nanofarad in parallel with 22k. Uh, that goes to pin 3 of the LM386. If you wanted a volume control, like if you're using this receiver with headphones, then you could change the 22K, take it out and put in a potentiometer. Anywhere between about 5K and 20K should be fine. The rest of this is a standard LM386 circuit, 10 microfarads between pins 1 and 8 to give you a bit more gain. Um, now there's a capacitor between pin 6 and ground. You can see that on the diagram, there's the 470 microfarad. Uh, pin 5, I haven't drawn it here, but you often see a network, a resistor of say maybe 1 ohm, in series with say 100 nanofarads going to earth. That helps prevent little oscillations in the LM36. If your LM36 stage is unstable, then add those two components in. Finally, 220 microfarad goes to the speaker. The 12 volts is applied to pin 6 of the LM386. You could put a 10 ohm resistor in this part of the circuit. That might help stable things if your LM386 likes to squeal. But if you do that, make sure you have a second capacitor going from pin 6 down to ground. 100 microfarad should be okay. The other parts of the circuit that 12 volt is applied to is the drain of the MPF-102 via the 4.7K resistor and the collector of the BC-548 via a 390 ohm resistor. Now, a BC-548 may be unfamiliar to you. You could use a 2N222 instead or any NPN small signal transistor. Now most noticeable is that breakthrough coming from a strong shortwave station on 7 MHz. One way to cut that down is to provide some additional front end cell activity. Or the lazy way is just to try a resistor across the antenna connection. 
a resistor will tend to reduce undesired signals at a faster rate than desired signals. So, although you'll get less gain, you should get a better signal to noise ratio. Oh, very good, Gee, Don't mention that stone stuff to boot wood. That's uh, what I got drunk on when I was about 15, and I've never touched a drop of it since. <laughs> Terrible stuff. See you, Pete. Seven three. Okay, that's made an improvement. Okay, next on this, we've got Tom there, VK488, and thanks for joining us again, Tom. Please make your call. Another thing you can do is to put a potentiometer across the antenna connection, a bit like a volume control. In fact, it doubles as a volume control. And for a simple receiver, I would rather have an RF gain control instead of a volume control. I would run the audio amplifier flat out, and if signals are too loud, then drop the RF gain control. You could use a potentiometer anywhere between about 1K or less and maybe 5 or 10K. Another possible treatment, if you're dead lucky, is just to unscrew the antenna connection. So you've only got the centre pin. That's greatly reduced the desired signal, but also undesired signals. The other compromise in this receiver, which is possibly also contributing to the breakthrough, is the 100 picofarad is fixed in parallel with the 4.7 microhenry. Just put in a variable capacitor, similar to what I'm using as the tuning capacitor, to get an exact peak. Or what you could do, you could have, say, a 68 picofarad disc ceramic capacitor and then maybe a trimmer capacitor up to maybe 50 or 60 picofarad. That will also allow you to make an exact adjustment. Well, there's Indonesia. That's probably about four or five thousand kilometres away. Now, of course, during the day, the reception would be a lot clearer without all that breakthrough. This has been our look at a simple direct conversion receiver. If you want something simple for a beginner to build, then a project like this, I think, would be ideal.